Christian Freeland has gone completely off the rails. In a mind-boggling press conference that left everyone stunned, she completely lied about businesses and the carbon tax scam. Our finance minister has ditched reality for some alternate universe where facts don't matter. Her wild statements are so out there they sound more like the rantings of a climate change fanatic than someone handling Canada's finances. How can she be so out of touch with the havoc her policies are wreaking on the economy? Let's face it, Christia Freeland has lost it. She's drunk the climate change Kool-Aid and abandoned the reason for eco-madness. As she drives our economy straight off a cliff, we're running out of time to take back control. Canadians didn't sign up for this crazy train to ruin the Freeland. We need facts, not fantasies, before her climate madness ruins our future. The livelihoods of hardworking business owners are on the line. It's time for a reality check for our delusional finance minister. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Christia Freeland, our minister of twitching, has reached a new level of delusion. Seriously, she's openly gaslighting Canadians. During a recent news conference about the government's climate strategy, she had the audacity to claim that companies are practically tripping over themselves to invest in Canada just so they can have the opportunity to pay the carbon tax. Can you believe it? It's like she's living in a whole other reality. Now her wild statement has got business owners and experts scratching their heads. Like, is she for real? Are we supposed to buy into this climate change alarmism over hard facts? It's downright baffling. You think the person in charge of Canada's finances would have a better grip on reality, right? But nope, the minister's comments show she's either dangerously clueless or just doesn't seem bothered at all by the damage these policies are wreaking on entrepreneurship and growth. It's like she's playing a whole different game while the rest of us are stuck dealing with the consequences. Freeland's claim is, believe it or not, that the influx of investments flooding into Canada is mainly because foreign investors have apparently come to terms with our groundbreaking strategy of slapping a price tag on pollution and our supposedly mighty climate plan. Um, I think it's really important to emphasize that in 2024, it is just not possible to have an effective economic plan that does not also include an effective climate plan. Um, that is simply the economic reality today. The investments that Canada is attracting today are coming to Canada in large part because foreign investors recognize that we have a price on pollution and we have a strong climate plan. And that means they want to be here and make stuff here in Canada and create good jobs here in Canada because the world, global markets, increasingly are not tolerant of things that are produced in an economy that is not underpinned by strong climate action. And so that's a really important part of what Jonathan has just been saying. This whole gaslighting gig she's pulling just goes to show she's either totally clueless or couldn't care less about what's really going on. Let's be real here. Companies aren't exactly tripping over each other to set up camp in Canada. Nope, it's quite the opposite. Thanks to our government's heavy-handed carbon pricing and over-the-top regulations, investment is taking a hike. Small business owners all over Canada are seriously worried about the economic landscape getting tougher by the day. All of her talk about fairness is a total lie. Our budget is about ensuring fairness for every generation, especially younger Canadians. And taking action on climate change is one of the most important things we can do to make sure younger Canadians have a fair chance at a middle class life. Because the cost of inaction today would be borne chiefly by them. That is not okay. We will not leave them behind. According to the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, it's like they're getting hit from all sides, crazy high taxes, prices going through the roof, red tape choking them out, and now these carbon fees that feel like another punch in the gut. It's no wonder up to 76% of them are thinking about calling it quits over the next 10 years. If all these small businesses pack up and leave, it'd be a total disaster for our economy. We're talking about wiping out over $2 trillion in business assets, with companies shutting down, selling off their stuff, and just disappearing. And it's not just about the money. These businesses are the heart and soul of innovation, competition, and job creation in Canada. Think about it. Nearly 70% of people working in the private sector are employed by small businesses. 
If these owners follow through on their plans to bail, we're looking at millions of people losing their jobs. That's a whole lot of dreams crushed, lives appended, and communities left hurting. Shockingly, business bankruptcies shot up a whopping 129.3% between January 2023 and January 2024. Owners are feeling the squeeze from all sides, costs going up, taxes piling on, you name it. And instead of easing up, Trudeau's crew is just adding more carbon fees, penalties, and paperwork. Like seriously, that's the last thing struggling entrepreneurs need. Twitchy Freeland's wild claims about foreign investment pouring into Canada because of our climate policies. The facts say otherwise. And now it is my very great pleasure to pass it over to our friend and partner, Mayor Andrea Horvath. Mayor. Thanks very much, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. I'm very pleased to be here uh, at Mohawk College. So thanks to Ron McCurley and the team here at Mohawk uh, for uh, uh, allowing us to use your wonderful space to uh, host the federal government here in the great city of Hamilton. I'm pleased to be uh, here with, of course, the Deputy Prime Minister who uh, just introduced me, as well as the Prime Minister uh, and our Minister Tassie locally, as well as our MPs, uh, Chad Collins and um, uh, Lisa Hepner. <laughs> I always remember her last name. Um, and so it's also really important, I think, to, um, to say that the real important part of today's uh, event uh, is the young people behind us. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank them. I want to thank them for having such um, a blunt and engaged conversation. Foreign direct investment has been stuck in neutral for over 10 years now, not budging an inch since 2008. So much for all that global capital rushing to our shores and slapping on a harsh carbon tax. Yeah, that's not exactly helping turn things around either. In reality, Canada's business game is seriously slipping compared to other places. With entrepreneurship already on the decline, our capital gains tax rates are now among the highest globally. The minister just brushes off the warnings that this will scare off investors, choke growth, and push talent and resources elsewhere. Her casual attitude doesn't match the frustration felt by Canadian business bigwigs. Over 100 CEOs who employ millions got together to send a letter slamming these tax hikes and the government's anti-business vibe. They're warning that Canada will be off limits for business if things keep going this way. Canadian business leaders wrote in her letter, We invest our time, our ingenuity, and our money. We are betting on Canadians, and we are betting that with hard work and tenacity, we can make the country better. You cannot tax your way to prosperity. But in the 2024 federal budget, we see a government trying to hike taxes on investment. Anybody with experience in entrepreneurship and investment can see how this will stifle growth. But instead of listening up, liberal cabinet members are dissing entrepreneurs, staying if they bail, the government will just find foreigners to take their place. It's a shocking show of disrespect and shows they don't get how important these business creators are for Canada's economy. This wasn't even the first time Freeland lied. It seems like these folks have a habit of dodging the truth or avoiding giving straight answers, which just shows they don't really know what they're doing with Canada's finances. It's like all she cares about is pleasing her masters at the WEF. Hi, Minister Freeland. I'm wondering if you explain why the capital gains tax changes are not included in the uh, legislation. I think I answered that question, but let me go for it again. And let me explain why. Um, um, let me be really clear. Um, um, our budget was a budget, central goal of our budget is for fairness for every generation. Fairness for every generation. Fairness, fairness for every for generation. Every generation with a particular focus on unlocking the promise of Canada for younger Canadians. We need to unlock the promise of Canada for millennials, millennials and, Gen and Gen Z. Z. That doesn't answer the question, but I will move on to Minister Champagne. Minister Freeland seems to have completely lost touch with reality and taken a wild ride off the deep end. Her wild claims that companies are just itching to come to Canada solely to fork over hefty taxes sound like the ramblings of someone who's had a few too many cups of climate change Kool-Aid. With Freeland and Trudeau's gang of climate wackos at the helm, it feels like they steered Canada's economy straight off the cliffs of sanity with their crazy policies. They're like a bunch of eco-warriors on a rampage, wreaking havoc on our prosperity with their bonkers tax hikes and suffocating rules. Well, that's all for now. Are Freeland and her cable of crazies even capable of basic math? Do they seriously not understand how raising taxes kills entrepreneurship?
Or are they so drunk on climate change hysteria they abandon all reason? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.